Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett. She's a mother of children, a judger of cases, and now a writer of books, and was recently given a $2 million book deal with Penguin Random House. But you see, this set off an angry mob. They're not happy about it. Aside from the fact that she was an appointee to the Supreme Court by Orange Man Bad, she also played a role in taking down Roe v. Wade. And this, argues her critics, makes her evil and worthy of deletion from the public square. And so, hundreds of Penguin Random House staffers and other literary professionals, so-called, are calling on the publishing company to cut ties with Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett to cancel her upcoming book. In their letter to the publisher, they wrote that, quote, we are not calling for censorship, end quote, and then immediately called for censorship of the female Supreme Court justice. What? Now, you might be asking, what the heck and hole is happening here? Talk about severe cognitive dissonance. Uh, we support freedom of speech, just not freedom of speech when it's bad. Huh. Well, that, my friend, is going to be the topic of our show today. So welcome to the topical umbrella. I am Adrian from the Trial Site News YouTube channel. Welcome to my show, The Place, where we cover everything. You know, free speech is a funny thing. Depending on whom you talk to, free speech can actually mean free speech. Choose to have an opinion that goes against the grain? Well, they may not like what you have to say, but they acknowledge that it's your right, and folks will disagree with you, but in the realm of ideas, live and let live. At least, that's what's supposed to happen. But on the other hand, there is an insidious growth of new think, a newer, cooler, smarter way of achieving free speech. And that, of course, is by only allowing speech to be free when it goes along with whatever the message happens to be today. If you disagree with a message, well, you might just get your house burned down maybe a little terrorizing of one's family and or maybe getting fired from your job. And let us not forget making people disappear from public discourse by banning them from social media. Now, the justification for this, of course, is that those who disagree with them are at best hateful or at worst downright evil. And people who are evil or who agree with evil think should be deleted from society. It is for the greater good, after all. Now, you can see this in the open letter to the Penguin Random House, where these dissenters opened it up by quoting David Putnam from a TED Talk titled, Does the Media Have a Duty of Care? In it, he said the following, There will be those who will argue that this could all too easily drift into a form of censorship, albeit self-censorship, but I don't buy that. It has to be possible to balance freedom of expression with wider moral and societal responsibilities. Hmm, interesting. Now, of course, we have seen this before. Every totalitarian regime employs this very tactic. Convince the public to not feel guilty for trying to eliminate wrong thought from public discourse. It's evil, after all. We cannot tolerate evil. Why, if you're fighting evil, then anything you do to fight it can be justified, right? I mean, if you're resisting bad people, then can your actions to fight them really be wrong? You tell me. Now, in their letter dissenting to Penguin Random House, they also wrote that, as members of the writing, publishing, and broader literary community of the United States, we care deeply about freedom of speech. We also believe it is imperative that publishers uphold their dedication to freedom of speech with a duty of care. We recognize that harm is done to a democracy not only in the form of censorship, but also in the form of assault on inalienable human rights. As such, we are calling on Penguin Random House to recognize its own history and corporate responsibility commitments by reevaluating its decisions to move forward with publishing Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett's forthcoming book." End quote. Now, I'm just a little curious and perhaps a little naive here, but which sin here is worse? Her attack on human rights via her ruling on Roe v. Wade, which returned the issue back to the states, or their attack against a human rights freedom of speech? I'm confused here. You know, reading this press release reminds me of a darker time in recent human history. The Soviet government back in 1921 created what would become known as Glavlet, or the General Directorate for the Protection of State Secrets in the Press. This was the main tool used for decades to control literature in that country. The censors had ultimate power to decide if a book was to be published or banned. 
And then in later years, during the Cold War, the USSR tried their best to block radio frequencies used by foreign nations. So determined were they from keeping their citizens from hearing wrong thought, or any Western culture for that matter. Even musical innovation was suppressed in that country. Great effort was taken to stop Western music, like rock or jazz, from infiltrating their culture. It wasn't until 1988 that Mikhail Gorbachev finally officially stopped blocking Western radio stations from that country. And the USSR wasn't alone here. Time and again in modern history we have seen this play out. We have seen totalitarian governments leading the way and censoring the public. And it's always for the greater good, you see always to protect the citizens from themselves or from some outside evil. Do we really want to be a culture that succumbs to this kind of nightmare? Ask yourself, do you want to find yourself in a future where we can only whisper to ourselves in private how we really feel or think? Well, my friends, that dark future is already partially here. We can already see its infiltration into accepted self-censorship. You can see corporate entities bowing to pressure or, worse, embracing this brave new world of social change. Social networks, for example, have become kings of speech and thought police, and most have just accepted this as part of the new reality. It just is what it is. Live with it. We can also see this with a changing of language to satisfy those who demand it. But words mean things, my friends, and changing the definition of words is a way to change how people think and feel long term. It's dangerous. And so on and on it goes. People like the good folks of this dissent letter are supposedly supporting human rights, while in the same breath attacking human rights themselves. They demand that people bow to their will. They demand that people shut up, give up your right to speech if you're bad. Ignore their sin of stripping an inalienable human right and focus instead on the supposed sins of a Supreme Court Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Her evil is greater, and that justifies theirs, don't you know? You see, it's for the greater good, my friends. Always for the greater good. Now, only time will tell how the situation will play out. But of course, I'll be keeping an eye on it. And when developments happen, we'll let you know. And that, my friends, will bring our episode to a close once more. As always, thank you so much for joining me on this program today. From the Topical Umbrella, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time.